All right, the Ravens go into San Francisco and face the 49ers in what should be a barn burner. <laughs> Just an offensive, uh, you know, the, bol the bold and Kamar Aiken battle that we're all waiting to watch. You know, this could be a higher scoring game than, than we expect just because no, I agree. both defenses are really not looking very good. And it's just like. I would stream either quarterback. Yeah, I would well, be willing. As long as Steve Smith is back and we have some confidence in him, uh, you know, Crockett Gilmore is back. I said that out loud. Crockett. Um, you know, the, the 49ers are the 30th ranked defense against the pass. The Ravens are the 25th. They, the Ravens can't stop anybody. This is why Kaepernick's my stream of the week. Um, what else do we say about this matchup? Hyde has missed a lot of practice time, but there's really no other options there in, in uh, San Francisco. No, he's – Hyde is uh, – he's interesting because it's – you can see the talent when you watch, just watch him run, but the, the team is – really letting him down with just with a workload of letting him do that four quarter run where the defense down they just they haven't been able to do it so uh, but this is a this is a game where I feel very confident in Hyde this is also a good a good week if if you've got some bye week struggles that you need to play someone off of waivers play Torrey Smith Torrey Smith is on a lot of waivers revenge and, game and you know it's a revenge game and their defense is bad every now and then Torrey Smith's gonna have a decent game uh, Another hot tip for fantasy owners: Sign Javorius Allen if he's on your yes, waiver wire, yes, whether yeah. you are a four set owner or not. There are a lot of things that make a uh, a waiver wire signing beneficial. Uh, you know, th there's a few things here. Talia Faro, the uh, kind of goal line, one of the the guys that were spelling four set is out for the year. Buck Allen is a rookie. He had a 44-yard run last week. He had his best game as a pro. He's figuring the offense out. And Justin Forsett has an ankle injury that probably will not keep him off the field. But you never know when you re-injure that. And he's older. And and they're not going to give Forsett every between-the-tackle carry all season long. They well, just if they, they, if they if they don't have to. The Ravens actually signed a new goal line back. His name is Joe Flacco. <laughs> oh, you were so disappointed <laughs> last week. Seeing. I was furious. Well, it just shows you that, you know, Forsett isn't built to necessarily be that, so they they mixed it up. Well, he was, and that blind bootleg was pretty nice. Yeah, I mean, they, it worked out. But I can see you cursing the screen while that happened. Uh, ferociously, yes. We just got a sleeper bot alert. Zoing. That said, Andrew Luck looks ready to go for week number six. That's good. There you go. So that's we'll good. We'll it's, see. It's good. We'll see. So, um, okay. Anybody else of relevance in this game you want to talk about? No. <laughs> All right, Chargers at <laughs> like, like absolutely not. Chargers going to Green Bay, and they are up against it. This game has a very high over under, um, as does the next game, the Patriots and the Colts. Now the Chargers, they kind of you know they blew it last week. It was a close game. They lost a close one to St the Steelers. Now they have to go into Lambeau. Uh, do they have a shot in this one? A shot, sure, because the. The Chargers' pass defense has been great. Yeah, they've, very. They've good. got they've got really good corners there, that, which normally is is good for the opposing team's tight end to kind of you know if if you've got really good corners on your wide receivers taking away you know Randall Cobb and James Jones, then it's going to be those extra options that sneak in. I think this is a sneaky play week for Ty Montgomery and you know I, Richard Rodgers is your stream of the week, right, Andy? He is. So there you go. I think it's a good good matchup for Are you uh, starting Rivers, Mike? Yes, I am. Uh, I, I am uh even against a very good defense. Yeah, I don't like the confidence is is not completely there, but the over under like it's that's where I'm I'm kind of If you had Sam Vegas. Bradford, who would you uh who who would you start? Sam Bradford or Philip Rivers? I I think I think I have Rivers higher, but that's very very close. Would you have him one higher? Would you start Rivers over Peyton Manning? Yes. Would you start him over Russell Wilson? Yes. What about uh Russell Wilson? What, <laughs> what about Colin Kaepernick? Uh yeah. I uh, I I'm trust me, I completely buy in with you that Colin Kaepernick is everything is set up for him, him to have a good good game. I just realized how high I have him and it's kind of embarrassing. Yeah, it, it is a little bit. I saw it. Yeah. Uh 3. How, oh. However, it Rodgers, Brady, Kaepernick. It could happen, but I just I have tr I have more far more trust in Philip Rivers than Colin Kaepernick. I I can I can understand that. <laughs> I think everybody in San Francisco would love it if uh, they did a little flip flop 
<laughs> with the quarterback position there. All right. Uh, obviously, we saw Gates break onto the scene. I'm getting flooded with Twitter questions, email questions on the website that are all the same thing. Should I trade Tyler Eifert for blank? Should I trade Greg Olson for blank? I have Gates. Should I trade Tyler Eifert for blank? I have Gates. And should the I answer, trade? The answer is yes. You should trade one of those two, but don't just don't just give them away because you have depth. Well, you know, I don't I don't need them. They're not starting for me. They're really needed and really valuable. Go get a good piece. Yeah, I saw a lot that were like, should I trade Tyler Eifert for Eli Manning? No. You know, those type of trades because, you know, you need a quarterback. So let's go get a, a middle, you know, top quarterback for my number one tight end. Yep. Uh, so we're starting Gates. You know, Green had a good game, even with Gates last week. Green played well just from a, a football perspective. They seem to want to use both of them. And uh, certainly, you know, the coverage that floats Gates way leaves Green, a pretty talented player, open a lot of the time. Are we confident in Keenan Allen? As much as you can. In, I'm, I'm, in this game. I'll yeah. If I mean, yeah. Stevie Johnson's out, I'm I'm okay with it because all of Stevie's will go to Keenan. Woodhead or Gordon, who has the better game in Green Bay? For now, you gotta you gotta say Woodhead. I mean, you just have to say Woodhead until Gordon proves something that he can see the the end zone once in his career. The we all have Woodhead as kind of a uh, RB two this week. Yeah, the, the the only difference for me was how involved in the passing game Melvin Gordon was last week. True. So it's he, we could be seeing the kind of the change. If you had to predict it, they'd be coming from behind in this game. That's uh, yeah, for game well, flow. And, and that's why last game matters so much because normally that means that's D Danny Woodhead time, but last week it was Melvin Gordon in on 2 minute drives and those things. So it, this could be the changing of the guard, I agree, but until it changes, you got to you got to stick with Woodhead. Well, we got a couple more games I want to preview. The Sunday night game and the Monday night game. And then we also have the Daily Dose. Chris Meany's coming on to talk some fantasy uh, DFS uh, value plays, smart plays this week. Then we're going to answer a few mailbag questions. So we'll have a little longer show today, but it's all right. It's Friday. You, yeah, guys, got the whole you guys want weekend. a little bit more. Um, the Patriots go into Indianapolis on Sunday night, face the, uh, we assume, Andrew Luck led Indianapolis Colts revenge game. An, an offense a revenge game because of the oh yeah playoffs because of deflate gate uh you know you real you really you're really gonna... buying into massive revenge related things today well no the Arians one maybe this one yes this one I the Colts were the ones who reported the the Patriots for deflate gate so you just think they're just gonna take the uh well I mean can they score more than they're scoring right now yes how could <laughs> You yes. think yes. Yes, they can. Yeah, now, I mean, if you look at last game, they, they did kind of take the foot off the gas a little bit. Rob Gronkowski hasn't scored in a couple of games. Does that change uh, Sunday night? Probably. Probably. Yeah, probably. Uh, Julian Edelman has been a consistent performer, not just in PPR. Uh, in every league format, Does uh, do we see Edelman's season continuing on this trajectory, or do we see it changing because of the involvement of LaFell down the line? Because no. You, you, uh, I think fully expect him to continue this all season long you you saw in so years past you. when Wes Welker was the king and he was so valuable on teams Randy Moss was still there and and Brandon LaFell is no Randy Moss so rest of season Edelman or Macklin Jason oh Edelman Edel Edelman to me is Edelman. like top five okay type of guy. so uh Edelman or Larry Fitzgerald rest of season Ooh, I'm gonna standard I'm gonna I'll go take, Edelman standard I'll take Fitzgerald um, PPR, I'll take Edelman. <laughs> yes. Brandon Marshall. Edelman. Ooh, that's... I'll take Marshall. Okay. I was just curious. For me, from... See how much love you guys had for Edelman now, because we didn't give him enough at draft season. It, True. There, there is something to be said about not just how high a guy will finish, uh, but how he puts his production up. And his baseline is so high that there is... You know, I, I would rather have DeAndre Hopkins. I'd rather have Julio and, and maybe Antonio Brown. There's very few guys I'd rather have than Edelman from a, a standpoint of I know I'm getting a lot of targets and a lot of catches every week from this guy. Okay. And obviously we're starting Brady. We're starting Lewis. We're starting Blunt. Yeah, that's I'm pulling up the, the numbers right now because uh, I forgot to do that. Of The last four games these teams have played, the Patriots have outscored the Colts by an average of 29 points. 
Yeah, and that it, lends itself to Legarrette Blunt having a nice game if they can get ahead again in the same fashion. But they're they're in Indianapolis, and and that's that was what I wanted to bring up was the la- just specifically the last two games against the Colts. Uh, the there was the regular season game last year. That was the Jonas Gray game. Do you remember when Jonas Gray had uh, uh, two hundred plus yards, <laughs> yeah. multi touchdowns? I think he remembers too. <laughs> Each and every week, he's on the practice squad of Miami. <laughs> He wakes up. He's got the the newspaper clipping on his yeah, roof, so he can I would wake too. up and see it. Uh, and then the then he got benched, of course, as we know. In the playoffs, Legarrett Blunt did the exact same thing to the Colts. So clearly, I I believe the Patriots know something about the Colts of how to exploit them which other teams, I guess, aren't doing of, of, of how to run the ball against them. Yeah, Pagano has lost the head-to-head strategic type of uh, battle here with Belichick each and every time. So I it's I think it's riskier, but I think LeGarrette Blunt could be one of those uh, weak-winning guys this week. Last question on this game. Andrew Luck, do you just roll him out there and just say, hey, let's go? Yes. You do? Yes. You say that with conviction. I Yeah, because okay. I... Yep. Monday night, Giants go and face Philadelphia. Philadelphia is favored in this game. Uh, Sam Bradford's had a couple good games in a row fantasy-wise. I wouldn't say uh, football-wise necessarily. I think he's been adequate at best. A couple, you know, end-zone interceptions, not end-zone touchdowns. <laughs> uh, I listened to that that part of it. Somebody <laughs> sent that to me when I kept saying, you know, he had end-zone touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Those those are and my absolute favorite you guys, type. You guys corrected me, and then I went on a really quick tirade, and I said, you know, if he can correct his end zone touchdowns, you know, I said you it said again. said it again? Yeah, I said it again. Wow. Because that was super smart. Um, Eli and Sam Bradford, fine starting both, right? Like both Absolutely. of them. Absolutely. Yep. I, yep. I love this game through the air. You got two not very good pass defenses going at it. DeMarco is my start of the week at the running back position. I think he continues to improve. I think they're figuring things out there. The game is coming a lot easier to him in Philadelphia right now. Mike. Talk to me about Ryan Matthews. How do you see him this week and going forward? Uh, I like him as an RB two this week and uh, RB two. That's I mean that's bold. Yeah, I, I th- yes, it is bold. Uh, I just I think that the team, like you said, I think they're figuring it out. And one of the ways that to improve the team is you have to get Ryan Matthews involved. He's been uh, at least he's been uh, the better back. Yeah, I mean, really. That's has. why he's either been better or at least equal to DeMarco Murray throughout the throughout the season he's just not getting the he didn't get the touchdowns like uh uh like Murray has but he's he's looked good he's looked a great fit for the offense he's involved in the pass game uh I personally making this choice as of at least of right now I am starting Ryan Matthews over Jeremy Hill okay I mean, I that, that you have to make a decision here on Jeremy Hill, and this is, I mean, that's right on the line for me. So, I don't blame you. Um, let's talk about the cor- uh, the wide receiver situation for both teams. We know the injury concerns with Odell Beckham Jr. and Ruben Randall. Uh, I think my gut tells me Odell Beckham Jr. is going to play on Monday Night Football. Yeah, I I agree. I think he will. You hope that he doesn't start the game. That's re-injure yes. the hammy. And then you know exit for ninety percent of the game, and you yep. end up with garbage. Yeah, that's the risk you take. I mean, it's if, if you think he's going to play, you should hopefully have an insurance policy if you need one. I've got a recommendation for you. I know where you're going. If you have Odell Beckham Jr., you can go sign Josh Huff. That's what I thought. You can go sign Riley Cooper if you have to. You can sign Nelson Aguilar if he's sitting there. Grab another option for you at the wide receiver position that plays on Monday Night Football, so that you can have you know. An emergency inactive doesn't leave you with zero points. I would still rather have Dwayne Harris, but yes, uh, I do like. I I think Huff is a is a really sneaky play this week. Um, at the tight end position, you have Zach Ertz, my stream of the week. I also really like Sproles. Just throwing that out there. Um, if you need somebody, this the, the Giants um, have been kind of torched just with those little over the top passes, time and time and time and time again this year. So that's where I think. Sproles and Ertz are going to feast in that in that little middle of the field and have uh, big weeks this week. I think you're going to see a really exciting, fun game that has a lot of fantasy relevance. And I think somebody in the backfield for the Giants is going to put up a good game. It's probably going to be Jennings, but it could be Vereen. I'm, I like and Vereen. We just, yeah. we just have a hard time. I'm not going to pretend I know what's going to happen in that backfield. I really, I really don't. So 